I can make a change. I definitely feel like I am making a change. You stumble into being a first. I definitely had queer comedians that I looked up to when I was younger. I take joy and pride in that. Pride Month to me means taking up space and holding space for others and also knowing exactly who you are and not being afraid to be authentically who you are and to never let anyone else tell you who you should be. You have the right to be exactly who you are. Pride Month to me, I think is sort of this time where we're supposed to shed light on the queer community, but it feels a little arbitrary as well. People are queer or different or express themselves as they see fit every day, all the time. Since coming out and having this platform that I have, I definitely feel like I can make a change. I definitely feel like I am making a change. What Pride Month means to me is going to your corner store with like a spring in your step, because it's your month. And you can buy all the honey buns you want. I definitely had queer comedians that I looked up to when I was younger. I mean, Margaret Cho was like the most revelatory thing. Some, some queer artists that inspired me would be uh, my friend Kevin Abstract. Kalani inspires me. Frank Ocean inspires me. I'm inspired by, I think, just people that aren't heard and people that feel like they don't have a voice. Those people inspire me to make sure they have space to tell their stories. They inspire me to continue to tell my stories. That's really what inspires me, is just humanity and, and folks that are fighting every day to, to not be invisible. The celebrity that told me that my work was inspiring was Regina King. I met Regina King at this meet and greet and she pulled me aside while we were both getting our nails done. <laughs> and she told me that your work is very inspiring. And she said, keep up the, the hard work. I really appreciated that from a woman like her who's now getting her directorial debut. As I grew up, I was on like Stan Twitter and whatnot, whatnot and I liked Rihanna a lot and Rihanna commented on my new song, Montero, before it even came out and she was like, oh, that sounds like really good. That sounds like a banger. This is the least queer answer possible, but Patton Oswalt sent a very nice DM and I was like, oh my God. The, 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 the straight people see me, and um, I, I loved him for so long. When I went on The View, Whoopi Goldberg was just very sweet and kind about my work and, and what I was doing, and it, it means the world when a person that inspired you feels inspired by the work that you're doing. My dream person to work with would be Steven Spielberg. I want to see how his mind works. I would love to just do some really dark, crazy stuff, because I know I'm capable of it, you know? And I think he would be happy with it, so I would love to work with Steven Spielberg. I think my dream collaboration in music would be Drake. He's been able to transform himself over and over in his career, which is what I plan on doing in my own. Plus, he's like super talented. Oh, I'd love to like work with Mark Jacobs on like a new SpongeBob tattoo for him. A lot of the people I'd like to collaborate with just are no longer here. I, I really wish a Prince and Whitney collab could have happened. It's not even about me being involved. Just I, I think maybe I want to be an audience. I want to be a consumer of the work. The gayest moment on SNL, we wrote this sketch called Sarah Lee with Harry Styles. He's this social media intern who posts a lot of thirsty messages. And right before the cameras rolled, it turned to Cecily and Harry, and I was like, I can't believe this is about to be on TV. Yeah, Dylan, I'm very disappointed. I passed down the Instagram to you because I thought it would be in good hands. Well, that explains these posts from before Dylan started working here. Oh, that, that, that's probably the gayest thing. I, I was, um, I was very flattered by SNL even doing like a portrayal of me. 
People are afraid of me because I'm different, but really I'm just your typical gay, black, country, rap, sneaker, entrepreneur. So I feel like they're like uh, one of those people that like the peak of pop culture and that I grew up watching. So yeah, that was dope. You know, it's interesting because sometimes when you, you stumble into being a first, I didn't realize that. I think when I was when I went in to do the voice work and it was super exciting, it was just something that sort of came off the cuff. And I said, what if I reference my girlfriend rather than my husband or partner? And the writers were like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. I think I know what's going on here. You do? It's not easy being a new parent. My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out, okay? I definitely heard a lot of reactions from queer parents who said, even though it was a small moment, it really meant something to them. And so for me, that's, I mean, that's worth his weight in gold. The personal lessons that I took away from Pose is to be willing to be comfortable to take your moment when you need to take your moment because it's fleeting. As far as the show being rooted in LGBTQAI community, I take joy and pride in that. Now that Montero's out, I'm more excited for the fans to hear the entire album as a whole because I've been working on it for so long and so proud of what I've created. Honestly, I don't think I would want to tell 15-year-old Montero anything. I don't think he would, he would have the headspace to get here if he didn't go through what I had to go through. The way like being 19 weeks at number one impacted my career is giving me more faith that I can do anything that I put my mind to. I think the biggest change I've seen is that people are more concerned with getting it right. Before, there's so many straight people writing queer characters, and that was the only represent representation we had, and we had to be thankful for it. These days, a lot of networks and, and, and showrunners are almost afraid to, to step into that space because they don't want to get it wrong. And I would like to encourage people, don't be afraid, reach out to people whose experience it is you want to explore and come together so that way we're not just telling queer stories, but we're telling queer stories accurately.